Hello, my name is Ryan from Buster Beagle 3D, and today I'm going to review the Two Trees TS3. It's a fully enclosed 10 watt diode laser engraving and cutting machine, which also comes with a built in rotary attachment. It's a completely pre built machine that works good, but needed some adjustments to make it work great. So, what did I do to it? What do I think about this machine? Well, let's find out. So quickly, I first wanted to go over the specs of this machine, and then I'll go into my experience and lessons learned using it. The Two Trees TS3 has a 10 watt fixed focus laser with an advertised 0.08 millimeter laser spot. The laser can operate at up to 10,000 millimeters per minute and has a work area of 200 by 300 millimeters, kind of. I'll talk about that a little bit later, where you will see that it is a few millimeters smaller than that. The machine can also be used entirely offline by loading G-code files directly to the laser via the micro SD card and controlled by a touch screen. It can be operated while connected to a computer using free programs such as Laser Gerbil or the paid program Lightburn, which is what I will be using to control everything. The machine is also able to connect wirelessly to send files directly to the SD card without having to have your computer connected. It can also be controlled by a mobile app as well. As for the wireless connection, I was a little confused because in previous videos that were released on early versions of this machine, uh, you used to hook up this laser to your Wi-Fi. Now this machine has an updated UI and no longer hook up to a Wi-Fi, but you connect to the machine as if it is the Wi-Fi itself. On your computer or mobile device, you will find the laser as a Wi-Fi connection and connect to it using the parameters you see on the touchscreen. You can then enter the IP address in a web browser on that device and access the controls for the machine. You can also upload G-code files directly to your machine from this interface to run later. So back to the build. Below the main honeycomb are some metal panels and beneath that is the built-in rotary attachment for burning things such as tumblers and other cylindrical objects. The machine is equipped with limit switches so it can use absolute coordinates that I will talk about in a little bit. It also has safety features such as flame detection, a full laser shield, and protections from overheating. Finally, the machine is fully enclosed with an internal ventilation system for smoke, or if you prefer, you can vent out the back port to truly remove any smoke or smells from your environment. The shell of the machine, other than the shield, is all metal. Uh, and I would consider what is my safest machine that I have so far because of that. It's heavy and hefty and isn't likely to get knocked around too much. So that's really it for the specs. And now I'm going to go over my experience with this machine and what I have learned to make it perform even better. The Two Trees TS3 comes double box and is very well protected with things like crush proof corners and lots of foam. Uh, there were not really any instructions on how to properly unpack everything, but it was pretty easy to figure out. Just be careful to take everything out, and I even found a brush on the bottom after I thought I had taken everything out. Uh, at first sight, I could tell that I was going to need to tighten the two Y-axis belts since they were not really on at all. I wasn't sure if this was intentional to protect those belts during shipping, but I just made sure that they were routed well and were tight. I had initially tightened the belts from the front, uh, but then I realized it's much easier to access the belts in the back of the machine, so I would suggest moving the gantry forward and tightening the belts in the back, which uh, it's easier to get a grip of them back there. There is a test file on the SD card, so I popped it in the machine, and using the test piece of cardstock that came in the machine, I ran the test file. Before I ran it, I made sure that the fixed focus module was at the proper height using the included aluminum spacer. For engraving, you just have to place the entire spacer between the flat panel next to the laser head and the object you are trying to engrave on. You will notice that the spacer has different levels on it to adjust the laser head to different heights based on whether you're engraving or cutting different thicknesses of materials. So once everything was set up, I homed the machine and tried out the test file. The first burn on the machine seemed to be warped and was not all that impressive. I realized that there was a little bit of play in the laser module, so I tightened the eccentric nut on the bottom of the axis wheel 
to keep the laser head from wobbling back and forth. I ran the test file again and got a very nice result. You can clearly see the difference between the before and after tightening that x-axis plate. Also at this point, I could tell that the recirculating of the fumes uh, of the enclosure was keeping the room from filling up with smoke, but it was still smelling the room up, so I decided to vent the fumes out the back of the machine. To do this, you need to remove the back panel and the plate covering the hole on that panel. You then must remove and reverse the two fans, which I actually forgot to do the first time, to make sure that the smoke is exhausting out of the machine. You then screw in the hose adapter and put everything back together. The TS3 comes with a nice hose to vent the fumes outside. So with the first test done, I wanted to check to see if the machine could engrave at the highest speed they advertise on their website, so I ran a quick speed power test and saved that to the SD card, and it worked pretty well. I actually stopped it before it finished because it was clear it was going to carve pretty deep into the surface at those lower speeds. With the test done, I wanted to try out an image I had bought on Etsy of a bear onto this slice of wood. I first ran some quick tests on the back of the wood, and then once I was happy, I started the job. I wanted to note that this wood was too thick to fit between the honeycomb and the laser, so I had to remove the honeycomb and put uh, the wood on some risers that I placed directly on the plates covering the rotary attachment. I thought this came out very nice. I have never burned this image before, so I really didn't know what to expect, but I was very happy with the results. Next, I burned this Mount Rushmore image onto a piece of wood, and again, I thought it did a decent job. After that, I wanted to test some cutting with this machine. I made a little test file that I ran at speeds from 100 to 400 millimeters in one pass, and 400 to 600 millimeters in up to five passes, but everything cut through this three millimeter piece of wood, so I doubled the speeds up to a thousand millimeters per minute and ran the test again. I found that something around 350 millimeters per minute worked well in one pass. If you wanted to reduce the char, you could do up to 800 to a thousand millimeters with three passes. Currently, there is no air assist for this machine, so more passes at faster speeds would improve the burning or charring. I also did some thicker 5mm wood pieces with similar results. You really have to test the type of wood that you are using since not all plywoods are the same and your experiences may vary. The next thing I wanted to try was the Norton white tile method and this is really where I ran into my first issues. I could not for the life of me get a decent image onto the tile. I have made this image many times on other machines so I know the image and the settings were correct but I could not understand why it was coming out so poorly. I tried multiple tests and settings with pretty much the same result, so I moved on to testing the rotary attachment, and this is where I figured out what my issue was. First, before you use the rotary attachment, you need to turn the knob on the back of the machine to the number two position. Then on the touch screen, you need to click on the settings, and then choose the rotary roller setting. What this does is change the steps per millimeter in your Gerbil configuration, to 102 so that you will have the proper steps to rotate your object. While I was doing some power tests on a tumbler, I noticed that I was getting a ghosted image on that tumbler. I looked up what could be causing that and found out that it is what is called a scanning offset. I looked back on some of my other machines and I noticed that there was a scanning offset adjustment value in Lightburn that came with those laser machine config files. I thought the same type of adjustment may have been needed here. I took out my caliper and measured the offset between the two images and came up with what I believe to be 0.25 millimeter line offset. I added the new adjustment to the device settings with that 0.25 millimeter offset and got a much nicer result. This made me realize why my tiles look so bad was because every other line was offset by 0.25 millimeters. This is something that is adjustable in the Lightburn software, but I don't know how to do it in Laser Gerbil or other software packages. So if you do, please leave a comment below and let the rest of us know. So before I got back to the tile, I wanted to use the rotary since it was now set up. In whatever software you are using, you don't need to use the rotary setting since it pretty much is what uh, that rotary roller button does for you. Now, the other issue that I ran into here 
was that I could not lift the laser head up high enough to be the proper distance from the tumbler, so I had to push the laser back and engrave more on the side of the tumbler than right on the top. This engraved fine, but it didn't look quite right. If you have seen my other video on how to adjust your image for carving on tapered and round objects, you would know that I like to enlarge the image so that the circle is wider and doesn't look so oval when burned around a tumbler. So in this particular circle should be 70 millimeters high, but 76 millimeters wide. When I went and measured the, the burned image, I noticed that it was 69 millimeters wide. So what this means is that the y-axis steps per millimeter was not correct. When you click that rotary roller button before, it changed your y-axis steps, known in your Gerbil configuration as $101, to a value of 102 steps per millimeter. Uh, you can see this value when you are connected to your machine via USB in the free program Laser Gerbil under Gerbil, Gerbil configuration, and scroll down to the dollar sign $101. You can also see this in Lightburn by clicking on Edit, Machine Settings, and scrolling down until you get to the dollar sign 101. Now, there are many ways online to calculate the correct value for this, and I'll link to one in the description, but they all give you the same result. What you want to do in the case of this calculator is you put in your current value from your Gerbil configuration, so that dollar sign 101 value, which again is now 102, then you want to put in the value that the engraving was supposed to be. So in my case, it was supposed to have created an image 76 millimeters wide. You then put in the value that it actually burned, which was 69 millimeters wide, and then what pops up is what you need to change your dollar sign 101 value to. So in this case, it's 112. I'm just going to round this number. Uh, I place that 112 number in the dollar sign 101 value and write that to the laser. I went and reburned the image on the tumbler and got a much nicer result than what I had before. Now one thing to look out for here is when you are pressing that button in the, in the touch screen to transition from the y-axis to the rotary roller, it will override this value every time you click on one of those buttons. When you click the y-axis to go back to the regular operation of the machine, it will change that dollar sign $101 value to 80, and when you click on the rotary roller button, it will change that back to 102. So you would just need to adjust that manually every time you go to use your rotary. So after I was happy with the results from the rotary tool, I wanted to go back and see what the updates to the scanning offset did to the tile image, and the results were far better you can clearly see details you couldn't see before, and I was much happier. I, however, wasn't fully happy with what seemed to be horizontal lines through the image. I decided to go back and check the mechanical rigidity of the machine. I noticed that my belts were still a little loose, and the entire gantry rocked ever so slightly. I went around the entire machine and adjusted all of the belts and eccentric nuts so that there would not be any more play in the structure of the frame at all. I would highly recommend you do this before you go and use the machine for the first time. I then engraved the same file again and once again got a much better result than before. I was really happy with how this tile came out and it had me wishing that I had fixed the scan adjustment and tightened the frame before the bare engraving uh, to see how much nicer that image could have come out. So the last thing I wanted to talk about before I give my overall opinion on this machine is with the machine and its limit switches, you are able to take advantage of absolute coordinates. This is where you can line up your piece to be engraved or cut in a specific spot and have the laser know exactly where that spot is going to be. Now, really, the only way to take advantage of this is with a grid pattern of some sort that can't move so you know where those coordinates are at all times. Because this machine has a honeycomb, you really can't engrave a grid onto that. Uh, also, the values on the honeycomb are somewhat useless since they don't line up with any of the laser coordinate values. So what I did was go and get a 3 millimeter piece of wood, 330 by 330 millimeters wide. Now, I could have just replaced the honeycomb with a piece of wood the exact same size, but this was a little bit easier for me. I drilled into my honeycomb and attached the wood on with some screws to hold it in place. I then designed a grid in Lightburn to take advantage of the full workable area of this machine so I could use absolute coordinates. 
Now this is where I realized that the workable area of this machine is slightly smaller than what was advertised. The website says X300 by Y200, but when you check the Gerbil configuration setting, it is smaller than that. The X axis is 298 millimeters, not 300, and the Y is actually longer at 209 millimeters. So I made my grid X297.5 by Y200, and it works just fine. This really gives you a more accurate representation of the total workable area of this machine. Uh, I will put a link in the description on where you can get this grid. So for my overall thoughts on this machine, I really feel that for many reasons, this is the safest machine out of all of the laser engravers that I own. Having this machine fully enclosed not only protects straying eyes from lasers, but it's full metal other than the window, uh, so that there, if there was a fire, I feel like it would be better contained. I also like the powerful exhaust system with dual fans that really pushes the fumes out of the enclosure to the outside. I love the fact that this machine can be run directly from an SD card or a direct connection, so this machine really has to never be plugged into a computer. Uh, even the Gerbil settings that I was talking about before can be changed through the Wi-Fi connection to the machine. I also thought that the machine did a good job at engraving and cutting after changing a few of the settings and tightening up the rigidity of the frame. This is a heavy machine that came a long way to me, fully assembled, so there's bound to be shifting of parts, but it would be nice if there was a checklist of things to make sure that I was uh, doing with the machine right out of the gate rather than finding the issues one by one. I would highly recommend a once over of the frame of this machine and belts before you do any tests. Make sure nothing is wobbling and everything seems rigid. There are a few things spelled not correctly on the machine in the UI or in the manual or something is lost in translation, but nothing I couldn't figure out. Their English is 100% better than my Chinese, so I can't complain. I guess where I got confused during the setup was that their videos online uh, are to a setup with the older UI, so I thought I had the wrong UI, but it turns out I have the updated one, but they have not updated their videos or documentation online. As for the size of this machine, it is not the largest laser that I have, but it's still enough for lots of jobs. You are limited by the size of the objects that you can fit into this machine, so just be sure that the size works for your purposes. You may even find that you are trying to engrave on uh, something that can fit inside of the machine, but even then you may not be able to reach that section that you are trying to engrave if that part sits outside of the workable area. The last thing I want to talk about is the shield. While the shield does provide some protection from the laser spot, I'm not convinced that it 100% protects your eyes from the laser spot. The machine still comes with protective laser glasses, and I would recommend using them anytime you are looking directly at the beam, uh, even through the shield. You really want to protect your eyes and make sure you don't do permanent damage to your sight. Another cool thing about the shield is that it has a sensor that can tell the machine whether the, the shield is up or down. If you are engraving directly from the SD card on the machine, the laser will stop as soon as the door is open and only resume when you tell it to. If you are burning directly from a computer using the USB, the laser will not stop when you open the door, so it's another reason I like working without computers hooked up to this machine. So that's it. I wanted to thank Two Trees for providing me this laser for review purposes, and I can't wait to see what they do with this machine to make it even better in the future. If you like this video, please do hit that like button and consider subscribing for more videos having to do with laser engravers, 3D printers, I have one coming up soon, uh, CNC machines, injection molding, and all things maker. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and we'll see you next time.